There are goals galore across Europe. Four clubs battle for the same star. Salah joins the 100 Club, a transfer roundup, and this week's Emoji Mondays all coming up on today's One Football Daily News. As I'm your host, Angelina Kelly, let's get into it. So first up, and there were some brilliant goals that happened over the weekend to talk about. So let's start off with Manchester United. You knew that's where I was going to start things off. Of course, Cristiano Ronaldo made his return to Manchester United and the Premier League. He scored his first Premier League goal in 12 years as he ended their game against Newcastle with a brace. It was a very emotional moment to see him back at the club, to hear the fans chanting his name, and it seems like he slotted right back into life at the club. And speaking of returns, of course, there was Romelu Lukaku's return to Stamford Bridge. Now, he has been back at Chelsea for a while now, but he managed to score his first ever goals at the stadium in Chelsea's win as he managed to get himself a brace. And when you look at the quality of the likes of Ronaldo and Lukaku, it's going to be such a tight race as to who's actually going to finish top goal scorer in the competition. Meanwhile, Antoine Griezmann, of course, did make his return to Atletico Madrid. He didn't get on the score sheet. It maybe wasn't his greatest performance, but still good to see him back. Meanwhile, over in the other side of Madrid, Real Madrid, of course, made their return to the Santiago Bernabeu and they managed to get a 5-2 victory over Celta Vigo. One of the stars of the night, of course, was Karim Benzema. Despite the fact that he's 33 and some people may be looking at him as maybe being, you know, one of those aging players, he proved every single doubter wrong as he managed to score a fantastic hat-trick. Meanwhile, Eduardo Camavinga, fellow Frenchman, he made his debut for the club and he also managed to get on the score sheet alongside Vinicius Jr, who is proving also to be a really key figure in this Real Madrid team. Despite ongoing construction work, 30,000 supporters were welcomed back to the Bernabeu as Los Blancos played their first match there since beating Barcelona in El Clasico on the 1st of March in 2020. And meanwhile over in Germany, Erling Haaland had a brilliant night in Dortmund's victory as he has now actually scored 65 goals in 65 games for the club. And it is just mind-blowing that this player is still so young and who knows what kind of records he could potentially break in the future. Meanwhile for Bayern Munich, they managed to get a 4-1 victory over RB Leipzig. And one of the standout players of the night was Jamal Musiala. The 18-year-old managed to get on the score sheet and it seems like he He's fast becoming quite an important player for Bayern Munich, another young star that has got bags of potential and I can't wait to see what he brings to the table this season. So next up, and just when you thought that RB Leipzig had lost enough over the summer transfer window, of course Dio Fumacano, Ibrahim Akanate, Marcel Sabitzer, could it be that another player could be heading for the exit door sooner than we think, as according to reports there are now four clubs all interested in getting the signature of Danny Olmo. Now Marco does report that on August 31st it was a very chaotic day in the transfer window, especially for Barcelona, as according to reports, they did try to sign Olmo at last minute once they realised that Antoine Griezmann would be departing from the club. Olmo was really allegedly open to a return to Barcelona, but RB Leipzig had to put a stop to the move, as of course they did not have time to find a suitable replacement. The player who can play as a winger or an attacking midfielder is reportedly still in the sight of Barcelona, and it seems like they are going to try and sign the player perhaps in the winter transfer window, or to perhaps wait until summer. However, it's not going to be easy for them as like I say there are other clubs that are interested Manchester United Juventus and Bayern Munich so the reports state that Barcelona could be set to make a 70 million euro bid for the player it will be interesting to see if that will be enough money for Leipzig but for them they may as well just wait and see what happens as the longer that they have Olmo at the club the longer that he keeps performing so well that just means that his price tag is surely going to rise as it already has risen since Euro 2020 when he put in some really great performances so let's look at these other clubs of course there's Manchester United I'm not too sure how he would slot in as an attacking midfielder or even a winger as as we have seen they do have quite a lot of players in those positions regarding Juventus they probably need all the help that they can get when you look at attacking midfielders maybe he could slot into that position depending what formation that they play but regarding the wings they already have the likes of Dejan Kulusevski, Federico Chiesa, Federico Bernadeschke so I'm not too sure if that move is going to happen and then there's Bayern Munich again another team that seems to have those areas of the pitch covered but should Kingsley Coman be departing from the club as he has been linked with the transfer to the Premier League, then maybe they could find room for him. And let's face it, it's Bayern, they'd probably relish taking another Leipzig player. So considering all the options, maybe Barcelona could be the best one for him. Of course, on the left, it seems like Ansu Fati will probably have that area covered once he is fully fit from his injury. Then, of course, on the right, Usman Dembele has been linked with a move away. Reportedly, they are trying to work out contract negotiations. There could be space. And then when you look at their attacking midfielders, there's Felipe Coutinho. I'm sure that he could probably overtake him in the starting lineup. Of course, it will all come down to money. And if Barcelona can afford 
of the player, as of course, after their financial difficulties that they've reportedly had, they probably do need to be careful about how much money they do spend. But we could potentially be seeing Olmo return to Spain. And next up, heading to Liverpool, where they managed to keep up with the Premier League's leading pack as they got a great victory over Leeds United. And the man of the hour was, of course, Mo Salah, as he has now scored his 100th Premier League goal. Of course, the game was slightly marred by Harvey Elliott's injury. Reportedly, it's looking like an ankle dislocation. He could be out for a while, and of course, we are all sending our best to him that he manages to have a speedy recovery. But looking at Liverpool and their performance in the game, and they pretty much controlled everything, and it was great to see Salah get that goal from a Trent Alexander-Arnold low cross. Now, when you look at Premier League goals and who has scored over 100 goals, there are only four other players that needed fewer appearances than Salah to reach that mark, and they are, of course, Alan Shearer, Harry Kane, Sergio Aguero, and Thierry Henry. It only took him 162 appearances, and it is a massive, massive achievement for the player. Salah has been such a vital cog in the machine for Liverpool, looking at their recent history and recent success, and it was really great to see him, Sadio Mane, who did manage to get on the score sheet even though he missed a few chances, and Yoga Hutter basically leading Leeds defence an absolute merry dance throughout the game. Of course, there have been a few doubts about Liverpool and if they really will be in the mix for this Premier League trophy, but it seems like they are back to being a really, really strong team with so much quality, and they are 100% in the mix for this title race. And all this shows is how much amazing quality is actually in the Premier League. I mean, you look at the news that's taken place over the weekend, Ronaldo's return, Romelu Lukaku managing to score two goals, Mo Salah's achievement, and this is all without even mentioning any of the stars at Manchester City. And this just proves that perhaps could the Premier League be the best league in Europe at the moment regarding the quality players that they have? And now we have our transfer roundup. This is where I take a look at some of the other news and transfers going on in the footballing world. And first up, despite signing a new long-term contract with Real Sociedad, reportedly a few Premier League clubs are still interested in Alexander Isak. Tottenham Hotspur have reportedly opened conversations with Ajax about signing defender Jurian Timber. According to reports in Spain, Atletico Madrid may have to fight off the likes of Borussia Dortmund and Juventus to sign Robin Gosens. And finally, Bayern Munich sporting director has admitted that the club have been keeping their eye on Florian Verts. And now we have Friday Fields. Of course, on Friday's Daily News, you guys gave us your predictions for some of the weekend's action. So let's see who got it right. Like me, Yusuf al Kavaji predicted that Manchester United would get a 4-1 victory. I was feeling very pleased with myself that I got that prediction right. Ilan Eric did predict correctly that Chelsea would get a 3-0 victory over Aston Villa. And Chrome Lizard predicted correctly that Napoli would get that win over Juventus. And now we have Emoji Mondays. This is where I stick a few emojis on some of the weekend's action. And first up, best goal. There are so many different options options for this one but I'm going to actually go with Bruno Fernandes's goal it was such a brilliant one and although it was Ronaldo's day at Man United I think he just proved once again that he is still such a key key player in this team and next worst game I'm gonna have to go with Juventus's loss to Napoli a little bit worried about Juventus only one point from their first three fixtures hopefully they can turn it around against AC Milan next weekend but yeah their defense was looking very leaky indeed and best game I'm gonna have to go for Bayer Leverkusen against Dortmund it was such an exciting game Dortmund came from behind three times to get the win and of course it was Erling Haaland's night as he has now scored 65 goals in 65 games for the team. So that's it for today's One Football Daily News. As always, check out all the other content that we've got here and until next time, I will see you all later.